Tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern over on Jaguar Gator 8, a new college football video drops. And now, on with our feature presentation. So, uh, did anyone see that coming yesterday? I'm not talking about the Buffalo Bills winning that game. A lot of people predicted that. They were favored, and on paper, a lot of people had them pegged as not just the better team, but as the favorite to win the Super Bowl. Heck, they were my pick entering the year to win it all. But for them to do that, to completely blow the doors off of the Rams, this is something that wasn't supposed to happen. It just feels weird whenever this happens in the NFL. The defending Super Bowl champion is supposed to open up the season at home, unveil their banner in front of a screaming crowd, and then start the season off with a 1-0 record. It's not supposed to go like this, where the visiting fans take over and where the Super Bowl champion gets demolished. Yet, that's exactly what happened on opening night of the 2022 season. Because in a stunning result, not because they lost, but because of just how bad they lost, the Rams fell by a final score of 31-10. It was a magnificent game for Josh Allen, who went 26 for 31, completing 84% of his passes while throwing for 297 yards and three touchdowns, and while running for 56 yards and another touchdown. The Rams got nothing going on the ground, as Buffalo's defensive line was manhandling Los Angeles all day. Not only did the Rams average less than three yards per carry, with Cam Akers somehow finishing the game with zero rushing yards, but Matthew Stafford got sacked seven times. Buffalo ended the game on a 21-0 run in the second half, and they easily could have put up 50 if it wasn't for some uncharacteristic mistakes in the first half. Seriously, Buffalo looked this good, and that was with four turnovers. If they tightened some things up, it easily could have been worse. The Bills just looked that much better on opening day. Now, it's only one game. We've got an incredibly long season ahead of us. Still, it's fun to react, and maybe even overreact to certain things, when the season starts off. And obviously, the defending champion losing their first game of the new year usually means nothing. The New England Patriots lost their opening game of the 2017 season. They made it to the Super Bowl that year, even though the Jaguars fan in me is still not over that and never will be. The Dallas Cowboys lost their opening game of the 1993 season. They ended the season as the winners of Super Bowl 28. Washington lost their opening game of the 1983 season against Dallas on Monday Night Football, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. They turned out fine, going 14-2 and making it to Super Bowl 18. But what about a loss like this? What about a total demolition of three touchdowns? Because after this game, I got to thinking, what does this game, historically speaking, mean for Buffalo and mean for Los Angeles? What does it mean any time the defending champion loses by three touchdowns, or 21 points, and what does it mean for the team that knocks the king of the hill off of their throne? Does it mean anything? Is it just one game? Or is it maybe a sign of things to come in both a positive and a negative way? Well, I did some digging. I looked at the over 100-year history of the NFL, looked at every single instance where the defending champion lost their first game by 21 or more points, as the Rams did here, and looked at every single instance where a team beat the defending champion on the opening week by 21 or more points, as the Bills did here. And I looked at how these teams fared on the season. We're going to dive into the specifics in just a bit, but the short version is this. If you're a Bills fan, you've got to be on cloud nine right now. And if you're a Rams fan, history isn't on your side in the slightest bit. Let's start with the victors in the Buffalo Bills. The Bills are the fourth team in the history of the NFL to defeat the defending champion by three touchdowns, so 21 or more points, in their first game. The last time a team did this, we have to go back to 2013, when the Denver Broncos, in a bizarre scheduling twist due to a conflict with the Baltimore Orioles, hosted the defending Super Bowl champion Baltimore Ravens. The Broncos won this game 49-27, winning by 22 points, in a game remembered roughly a decade later for Peyton Manning tying the NFL record with seven touchdown passes. It would be a sign of things to come, as Manning would set an NFL record that season with 55 touchdowns, a record that still stands to this day. And it would also be a great sign of things to come for the Broncos. They finished the season with a 13-3 record, and the number one seed in the AFC, and they made it all the way to Super Bowl 48 that season. We're not going to talk about that game, but despite the incredibly sour note to end their season on, they were able to make it to the Super Bowl. That's a good sign. 
Prior to the Broncos, the last time a team did this, you actually have to go back more than 60 years from that date, when in 1952, the Cleveland Browns took on the defending champion, with that team being, coincidentally, the Los Angeles Rams. The Browns won this game by a final score of 37-7, in a game that was total domination from start to finish. The Browns had 419 yards of total offense compared to 158 for the Rams, outgaining them by nearly triple the yardage. The Browns forced five turnovers and picked up over 6.3 yards per carry on 291 yards rushing. And their pass defense was nothing short of superb. On this day, the Rams played two quarterbacks, playing Norm Van Brocklin and Bob Waterfield. They combined to go 6 for 27, completing 22% of their passes for 66 yards, no touchdowns, three interceptions, and a passer rating of 0, 0.0, which is... Well, that's literally the lowest possible rating you can get. You can't go into the negatives. It literally does not get worse than that. Was that a sign of things to come for the Browns? Absolutely it was. The Browns finished the season with an 8-4 record, and they won the American division, meaning that they got to play in the NFL Championship, where they would lose 17-7 to the Detroit Lions. Still, they made it to the championship game. Another really good sign for Buffalo. And the only other team to do this was two years before that, when in 1950, it was the Cleveland Browns who took on the reigning NFL champion Philadelphia Eagles. Now you might put an asterisk next to this one to some extent, because the Browns were the defending AAFC champions, and this was the first year after the NFL added three teams from that league, so you really had two defending champions. Still, the Browns, the best of the AAFC, went into Philadelphia Municipal Stadium to take on the best of the NFL, and the Browns won in convincing fashion, taking it by a final score of 35-10. Cleveland finished the game with nearly triple the passing yarders that Philadelphia did, outgaining them 346 to 118 in that department, and forcing five turnovers. For Otto Graham, it was quite his entrance into the NFL, as he finished the game with 346 yards passing and three touchdowns. Keep in mind that the year before, in 1949, the average NFL team was getting 161 passing yards per game, so Graham, who was doubling that, was showing why he was head and shoulders above the rest of the league. And did this scheme mean anything for the Browns in the grand scheme of things? Yep. The Browns finished the season with a 10-2 record, won the American division, made it to the NFL championship, and won it all after defeating the Los Angeles Rams 30-28. Now we're talking about a sample size of three here. It's not exactly the largest sample in the world, as we don't have a ton of data points to choose from. However, there is a trend with all these teams that, if you're a Bills fan, you have to be feeling incredibly happy about right now. Because all these teams, whether it be the 2013 Broncos, the 1952 Browns, or the 1950 Browns, not only won their division, but made it to their league's championship game. Whether it was the NFL championship in the pre-merger era, or the Super Bowl in the post-merger era. The set is a perfect 3 for 3. So if Buffalo looked like a Super Bowl caliber team yesterday, that's because history is on their side and says that they probably are one. It is incredibly rare for a team to do what Buffalo did yesterday to the defending champions. In the over century long history of the NFL, we're talking about something that prior to yesterday happened only three times. But when it does happen, oh man does it bode well for the victors. However, for every winner, there is a loser. And this raises the question in the opposite. What the heck does this loss mean for the Rams? If you're the defending champion, and you just got blown out by three touchdowns in your first game of the new season, are you in any trouble? Is it time to overreact and hit the panic button? Well, the good news for the Rams is that of the three teams that this happened to, none of them finished the season with a losing record. Not that I think anyone had the Rams projected to have a losing record this season. They've never had a losing record under Sean McVay. And before this game, had never spent a day below 500 under McVay. But the bad news is that in terms of what this means for making the playoffs and building off of the success from the previous year, it's not pretty. Not at all. Let's start with that 2013 Ravens team that lost to the Broncos by 22 points in their first game. Yes, the Ravens lost a ton of pieces from that 2012 championship team, and perhaps no defending Super Bowl champion got decimated more than the Ravens did that offseason. Heck, their over-under for wins in 2013 was 8.5, which is an almost unprecedented low number for the team that just hoisted the Vince Lombardi Trophy. However, 
this loss was a pretty good indicator for how their season was going to go. The Ravens only went 8-8 that season, and they missed the playoffs with a negative point differential thanks to an offense that averaged only 20 points per game, which ranked in the bottom quarter of the NFL. As for the 1952 Rams, who lost to the Browns in their first game of the new year, they actually finished all right that season. They were able to recover nicely, going 9-3, and, and finishing with a top offense in the NFL, which was an offense that averaged a league-best 29.1 points per game. They definitely rebounded from that poor performance. However, there are two caveats to this. Number one, despite their 9-3 record, it was not good enough to win their division as they lost in the divisional tiebreaker game to the Detroit Lions. And number two, there is a bit of an asterisk next to this one, as after just one game, head coach Joe Steidehart resigned, with Hampton Poole taking over. Steidehart was frustrated with the front office, and after their 30-point blowout loss to the Browns in the opening week, he saw the writing on the wall and decided to quit. I bet my house on Sean McVay not quitting after this game, so a bit of a different time to say the least. Still, the 1952 Rams did not win a playoff game and did not win their division. And with the 1950 Eagles, who also lost to the Browns in their first game of the new year, that game was a very good indicator of what was to come for the defending NFL champions, because it was rather ugly. Even though Philadelphia had an outstanding defense that led the NFL by only allowing 11.8 points per game, they could only muster up a 6-6 six six season, ending the year on a four-game losing streak and an abysmal stretch at the end, where over their final three games, they only scored 17 points. That's not going to get it done. The Eagles missed the playoffs, finishing a whopping four games back of first place, and they finished the season without a winning record. This sample set doesn't exactly inspire a ton of confidence if you are a Rams fan right now. None of these three teams had a disastrously bad season, and considering the fact that neither of these teams finished below 500. While you could definitely say that these were disappointing seasons, I don't even know if you could call these seasons bad seasons. However, none of them won a playoff game, and depending on your definition, none of them even made it to a playoff game, since the 1952 Rams played a play-in game against the Lions. All three of these teams, just like the 2022 Rams, lost by three touchdowns or more in their opening game of the season, and all three of these teams had seasons that their fan bases would definitely describe as unsuccessful. So we're one game into what should hopefully be a thrilling and exciting 272 game regular season. Making reactions based off of opening day can be deceiving for very obvious reasons. Remember last year when the Houston Texans and Carolina Panthers looked like they could be great and the Green Bay Packers and Tennessee Titans looked awful and completely washed up? It's one game. But if we're looking at it deeper, and looking at what the century-long history of the NFL has taught us over the years, it's that in moments like this, it might be more than just one game. Maybe the Rams will have a bit of a championship letdown, just like the other three teams that fell into that criteria. Maybe the Bills will be Super Bowl bound, and will prove themselves to be the best team in football, just like the other three teams that fell into that criteria. Whatever the case, and however it plays out, if you're a Bills fan especially, you've got to be feeling awfully good about this one. Smash a celebratory table in honor of this stat. You've earned it. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar Gator 9. To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.